So I've been doing some research and seeing what other people's done. And if you don't know yet, if you own one of these or you don't own one, you're looking to purchase some one, you find that there is a quite a temperature increase on this aquarium. Now, when you have a pump that's installed in the back and you have your skimmer and whatever else you put in there, your heat pump or your wave makers and stuff like that, that all adds heat to your water. So I found that the main source of the heat was the pump itself. Um, so I came up with an idea uh, of cooling it off and I wanted to show you how I'm gonna do it. So the back chamber here, this cover comes off as you can see and integrating some cooling fans. So as you can see, mount them right on here, two of them, and run them off a temperature control module for your aquarium. So I just, right now I'm just, I got the fans on here. I gotta cut the centers out. I didn't cut them out yet. As you can see, I just have them mounted in here. So now we're going to cut the centers out. So I just wanted to show you this. Now I'll show you when it's all completed, the fans are running. Okay, so the holes are now cut. I just cut it out with a circular saw. I'm just gonna clean up the edges now where it kind of melts the plastic as you're cutting. So now I just gotta clean that up and give it a quick clean in. And I'll mount the fans on it. Here's the fans, just in case you want to know what size fans these are. I don't think it has it on the box. It does. These come with a two year warranty, hassle free warranty too, which is pretty awesome. So, that's the fan. So let me get these cleaned up. Then I'll wash this and put it back together, put the fans on. Then we'll take it over and we'll hook it up to the aquarium. So, let's get this done. So there it is, I got them cleaned up. Pretty decent. Just took a knife and went around it and cleaned all the plastic edges up. Now let's get this wiped off and hook the fan up. Now the fans are installed. Let's put it on the aquarium. There, they're installed. I forgot to mention that these things were uh, USB too, as well. So I was going to use the adapter, but I have a power bar in the bottom that has USB plugins. So here they are, they're installed. They're drawing air right inside the tank. So I'm pushing the air from out here into the tank. So this should keep the tank two degrees cooler than what it was. I was having a hard time with this tank going right to 81, 82. I can't have my reef tank going to 82, 83. It needs to stay around 77, 78. So these two fans blowing the air from outside into the hood because I don't want to take the cover off. 
If I remove the cover, I'm going to have a lot of evaporation issues. These two fans are going to be integrated with a uh, temperature guide that goes inside the tank in the very back. You'll see I'll have it hooked up in the back here, and it will be able to tell. I'll be able to tell this device uh, when the fans I want to kick in and when I want them to kick out. And the same thing for my heater. My heater will be plugged in and integrated into this unit. So the heating and cooling unit will all be in one. As you can see, the corals are doing really good. They've grown a lot since I've put them in here. The snail is way up top. You see him back there eating. My pumps. And I have two uh, heat pumps or wave makers that are basically they're integrated with each other. So the Wi-Fi setup is setting. This is the master. This is the slave. I run everything from here. This follows. So it seems to be working pretty good. So I've been doing some reading and people, you, I guess you can buy, I seen you could buy these fans for the aquariums. That does the same thing, but there's a little lip. It slips down over the top of your glass, and it sits there, and it blows on your tank. Of course, you need to have no cover again. So I was like, well, this will work. Works really well. So, I thought I'd share that with you guys. I even found that the cover on the back here, it was always sticking up a little bit on the sides. Ever since I put these on, now it sits flush. Now you're probably wondering how noisy are these? Listen, the only thing I can hear is the wave makers inside. They're pretty quiet. Now, another thing too, if you're worried about dust, so you're probably thinking, well, that's a good idea putting these in, but what about it drawing the dust into your aquarium? Easy fix. Now you can take and put a dust cover on these. You can also put a dust cover on the inside, on the bottom, let's just unhook this. So you can put a dust cover in here, which I'm going to put the dust cover on the inside and the outside. Always that cover fits better with the holes cut in them. So there you go, you guys. Here's a quick solution. Cheap, 20 bucks for the two fans. They're USB uh, powered. Um, I don't know if I can show you where I got them plugged in. I was going to use this adapter, like I said. But as you can see right there, I got to plug in the USB into the power bar. On the fans itself, there is a switch on there that you can Adjust your fan speed. I can find it here, right here. So if you want to keep this up like this, there's a little sticky thing that comes with it. I can stick it to the wall, but I don't want to do that because if I want to move this cover, everything is going to be attached. I don't want nothing attached because of course the media is in the back and you need to pull the top cover off pull the media trays out but as you can see here is the switch you got high medium off 
low so I'm running this on high for now because tonight I want to see how well it works see 77 the heaters already turned on it wasn't on before it was the tank was 77 so that cooled that tank off that quick actually it's kind of weird I don't know if that's just uh yeah but as you can see when I first started the tank was 78 and I had these on now we've been talking for six minutes almost seven minutes and now it's done to 77 and the heater is on so I'm definitely going to have these integrated with a programmable uh, heat and cool unit that will work just fine. 20 bucks, a little DIY, and you don't have to integrate or put any kind of cooler in your tank. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be installing a battery backup on the inside of the aquarium stand. In there, there's going to be a power unit that's uh i think it'll run it for 48 hours something like that maybe it's three days but uh what i'm aiming for is for a three-day power outage if anything like that any longer i have a battery back uh, pack that will uh, run this tank especially the pump and the light for another two or three days so, you know, power is out for a week. Generally, it's not here. It's usually only out for maybe one day or two days at the most. Uh, we have a hurricane coming, so Hurricane Lee is approaching us, and I'm a little worried about that. I do have a battery backup. There's one. It's plugged in right here. And I also have another battery pack that I purchased off of uh, Amazon that should run it for another two days. And if I have to, I have an inverter in the closet. I'll pull a bat. I'll go buy a battery that's already charged up, and I'll run it with a battery. So, car battery, deep cell car battery. So, thanks for watching, you guys. Just wanted to share this little DIY project with you guys. If you're having the same issue, I which you, I know you've got to be. Um, I seen other people saying, "Well, oh, I'm having problems with the temperature," and their solution was removing the cover and uh, that means you're losing a $200 light well, actually it's almost $300 that light and they're taking the cover off and they're hanging their own light and they're just leaving the top off so I don't want to do that because they're all complaining about well you know the evaporation and you need evaporation in a saltwater aquarium you're constantly adding your uh, RO water and that's a, topping it up and it's a pain in the butt so yeah so anyways it's back to 78 so that's where I want to keep my tank 77 78 so thanks for watching you guys that is the DIY project for cooling a Fluval C flex 32 gallon 123 liters. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you whenever I can. Later, you guys.